Today we are going to talk about Embarkation Day, which was yesterday on the Discovery Princess. I've got some itinerary updates for you, some canceled excursions on one of our cruises that I wanted to make sure everybody knows about so that you know to check your excursions, as well as lots more. We're gonna talk about the app, the Princess app, so let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips and today is April 4th of 2024. It's Thursday and yesterday we embarked on the beautiful Discovery Princess out of Los Angeles on the amazing total solar eclipse cruise. Alrighty, so we're going down to Mexico and back. It's 10 days long. So during the course of my cruise, I am going to let you know how things are going here on board, as well as share other news with you that I think is important. So today we're going to start off with embarkation day yesterday. Uh, we're going to probably lag by a day because the internet is slow on this ship. We'll cover that first. Um, on the Discovery Princess thus far, our Wi-Fi has been really slow. I am not even able to FaceTime and um, so I'm just putting that out there. So when you come on the ship, bring your patience when it comes to the Wi-Fi. And I know it can come and go on different cruises, but it's not been remarkable even when we were right by Los Angeles as we sailed away and then got a little bit further down the coast as we tried to use the Wi-Fi a little bit more in the evening. So just putting that out there, like I said, Bring your patience, okay? Now I want to start off by letting you all know that we are off to a great start here on the Discovery Princess. I love Sailing Princess. I love going on the Discovery Princess. This is my second time getting to sail on board her. The last time was in, at the end of October in 2022 when they had the last Love Boat cruise. And so if you wanna go on the next Love Boat cruise, we have a group going. It's She Sails on the Enchanted, August 31st of 2024, round trip out of New York City. And so definitely, um, send me an email if you would like to go. We would love to have you come. And so I just wanted to tell you everything is going really great. We're having, we've had beautiful weather. The ship is beautiful. The crew is amazing. So just wanted you to know everything is going really well. Now, really quickly, let me tell you about the excursion cancellations. So on our group cruise that we've got on the Celebrity Silhouette that goes October 11th, round trip out of Athens, we are getting some notices that some of our excursions on that sailing have been canceled. So the reason I'm letting you know this is that if you happen to have either that cruise booked and whether you're in our group or not, or if you're on a different celebrity sailing in that region, you might want to take a look at your excursions. We receive notification in our email, but every once in a while cancel, um, excursions can be canceled and the email from the cruise line can go to your spam or maybe you don't get one. So take a look at what your excursions are. Right off the one for Ephesus, we had a small group one. We are going to replace that with the best of Ephesus. That was our second choice. And so we are going to get that booked. Incidentally, when we try to book it, um, we can't get logged in. Don't know if it's from the slow Wi-Fi on the Discovery Princess or if it's because their site is having a little bit of trouble today. Also, um, Princess has let us know that on our cruise on the Discovery Princess, that is same ship that is going at uh, July 27th, um, that there is a little bit of itinerary tweaking going on. This, and this is going to be on several other cruises. I'm starting to get um, some messages from people that they are also seeing these changes on their cruise. So if you're sailing on the Discovery Princess, you might have similar changes as well. So I wanna let you know what they are. So first of all, Princess said that they have to make these changes to align with the cruise line agencies of Alaska, <clears throat> what their um, requirements are. So here we go. First of all, um, in Juneau, um, on July 29th, instead of departing at 10 p.m., I believe we get there at 1 uh, p.m. in the afternoon, so plenty of time to do the excursions, see everything that you want to see. Instead of leaving at 10 p.m., we're going to leave at 9 p.m. Also on July 30th, we're going to actually get to Skagway, which was a really long, nice day anyway. But instead of getting there at seven in the morning, we're going to arrive at six in the morning. Um, we're actually going to leave Glacier Bay a half an hour early. So we will be officially leaving at 2.30 in the afternoon instead of three. So here's something I wanna tell you all about Glacier Bay if you don't know that. So when you um, go on a cruise that gets to go to Glacier Bay, 
they always stop close to the entrance of uh, Glacier Bay because it is a national park and pick up park rangers. And as they um, pick them up, it's kind of um, right there by Gustavus, I think is how you say that little place there. And then off you go up through um, to enter Glacier Bay and go along. And by the way, if you get to go to Glacier Bay, I'll have to have Gordon link my favorite books about Glacier Bay. There are a couple that are remarkable and it's always amazing to read John Muir's writings about Glacier Bay because it really gives you a really cool point of reference. But anyway, so you enter and as you go along, the scenery right at the beginning, of course, Alaska is beautiful, breathtakingly beautiful. But as you go in, it takes a little bit of time before you hit the part where you start seeing the glaciers. So you're going to want to be up and start listening to the commentary by uh, the park rangers. They run a commentary that you can listen to on your stateroom TV. There's always a channel for that or it'll be played like when you're up on the top decks or the place where they are located. It's really fun. They're very kind. They answer your questions. They run a commentary. They have some things for sale for Glacier Bay National Park. It's a special day on a lot of levels. But anyway, be up. And a lot of times they enter at six in the morning. So just plan to be up and ready to go so that you don't miss anything. And then you will see the glaciers and then they will continue the commentary as you come back um, out towards the entrance and then they will get off the ship. So leaving a half an hour early, um, I don't think that that's a game changer, a deal breaker, anything at all. So when you see that change, don't be panicked about it, okay? Everything is still set great for your visit to Glacier Bay. Alrighty, so let me know in the comments if you've got some more questions about that. And then the last update to the itineraries in Alaska on the Discovery Princess is on the day that we're in Ketchikan, instead of leaving at 1 p.m., we're going to leave at 1.15 p.m. so you get 15 minutes longer there in Ketchikan. So let's talk about embarkation day here on the Discovery Princess. If you have not sailed out of the Port of Los Angeles, the Port of Los Angeles San Pedro there is very close to where Long Beach is. All right, so just kind of have that in your mind, but the ports are separate. So when you arrive, really how much congestion you're going to have will partially be, term be determined on how many ships there are on port that day. So everyone, several people I've had the pleasure of meeting here on board who were actually on board the May 31st sailing and then our started on April 3rd. They said that that May 30 that March 31st embarkation was just a nightmare because there was also a Norwegian uh, ship in port that day. And so you had so many people disembarking and then all the new passengers coming. They were saying that at one point that the line just to get in to the uh, parking, not the parking area, but where you would be dropped off um, was like 45 minute wait to be able to get in. And so keep that in mind and plan extra time when you are embarking here. Another really important thing to remember though is I always allow extra time in all the ports that we go to because we have sailed out of Miami on days that there has been construction in that area or they've been I don't know what all they're doing, but we have had really long waits there as well. So plan in some extra time. I would always like to be early and have to wait a minute rather than be late. So yesterday, as we were embarking, we arrived in the port at about 9.45 and we ended up being on, um, getting on board the ship around 10.30 or so, which is really not bad. There was a really, 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 really long line that we had to stand in. Um, Princess has done away with giving you an embarkation time. They simply tell you the window of time that you can board the ship and uh, that's when you can show up at the port and a lot of people were already there by the time we arrived at 9 45 in the morning. Now when we looked at our app it showed that embarkation time was from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Interesting thing and I'm going to talk to you about dining here in just a minute but um, when I was talking to the princess person on the phone for quite some time yesterday morning, they were saying, oh, you can start embarking at 9 a.m. And so I don't know if some people's apps show different times and that's why they came earlier. Ours said 10 to 2. Now, uh, as we arrived, we had to wait in that long line outside. I was really grateful that it wasn't raining. But once they started processing guests and starting to let everyone in where they could check in, the line did move very quickly you end up coming up um, to a desk. You either show your passport um, and then you go through security. So you either show your passport or if you have a medallion, it didn't seem like they were making people show their passport. We didn't have our medallion yet, so we showed our passport. You go through security, there's a scanner. You also have to put your belongings through another scanner. 
and then you proceed to the check-in area. Quick note, in Los Angeles here, they've got the green lane and the blue lane, and we are blue laned, but uh, as we were entering the blue lane, they did ask if you were um, sweet or elite guests, and you went through one line, and if you weren't, then you went to another line. I think it's their attempt to try to expedite embarkation for people who are staying in a suite or who are um, elite passengers. Uh, th when we got someone, um, uh, they maybe were just brand new at their job, but it took quite a while for us to get our medallions. And then they kind of sent us the wrong direction uh, to get on the ship and everything. So that was a little bit funny, but in the end we got on just fine. So it's all okay. I just want you to bring your patience, okay? And if something doesn't seem right, just keep asking um, because um, they sent us in the wrong place and it didn't seem right. So we kept asking. So don't hesitate to keep asking. Once we got on the ship, we were really happy to be on board. And here's a quick note for you. I know that everyone knows that when you get on board the ship, you can add the plus package or the premier package if you want to. Uh, we decided that since this is going to be a warm weather cruise, it's 10 days, we've got sea days, we've got port days that we know we're not gonna spend the whole day in port we decided to go ahead and get that soda package. The soda package with the gratuities costs $17.69 a day. So kind of think about what you want to get. But if you get a couple of mocktails and a couple of Diet Cokes, you're set. So it covers your um, fruit juice, um, not all of the fancy fruit juice at the juice bar. Throwing that out there, but it covers some of the fruit juice, your smoothies, your mocktails, and your soda. And I have received both fountain sodas and canned soda. Alrighty. So that's been my experience so far, but you can add that. Like right when we got on, there was a crew member saying, do you want to add the Plus or Premier? And we said, no, but we want to add that. And he had it added that quickly. It went really, really smoothly and our app worked perfectly fine for that. I also want to add that yesterday um, when we boarded the ship, we had not had a chance to have breakfast yet. And so at about 11 o'clock, we went and had an early lunch and it was actually really good. I had grilled vegetables and some sauteed green beans and uh, two pieces of cheddar cheese. That's what I chose. And then uh, Gordon chose some chicken and some other things for lunch. And then we had fruit. And so it was really good. The fruit was our dessert. We didn't need another dessert. And um, so that was really nice. And then we had a sunshine daiquiri. I am really excited to tell you that here on the Sun, um, <laughs> the Sun Princess, here on the Discovery Princess, if you go to the um, bar right there on the Lido, the one at the back, um, there is an amazing, an amazing waiter there. Um, uh, amazing bartender there and he will make you a sunshine daiquiri that is on the rocks it is not in the blender and it was really good and a lovely start to our cruise a really quick note that I've got for you I know that we all are told that we have to be prepared we've got that boarding pass that has the QR code on it as well as our passport when we go for embarkation um, just know that thus far nobody has ever asked to see our boarding pass uh, one time on a cruise in um, Southampton they wanted to see that you had the app and so people were quickly downloading and I think I talked about that in the video at that time but yesterday nobody even asked to see it you did not need to show anything to do with the app so if you are someone who is challenged uh, even if you're not challenged and you just don't want to be bothered by dealing with the app you can go to embarkation and check in they took another picture of our passport they ask us questions about it and so if you don't want to do the app you don't have to do the app I really do think that you're going to want to do the app if you want to make your dining reservations, if you want to know anything about the schedule of events that's going to go on, if you want to uh, be able to buy the Wi-Fi before you get on board the ship, all of those things uh, you need to do in the app. Uh, if your loyalty is not right and you, so that you don't get the uh, Wi-Fi for the correct price, then you can call Princess and do that before you go, or you can do it once you get on board. But let me tell you, the lines are really long on an, embar on an embarkation day at Cus Services, so I wouldn't want to have to manage anything that I didn't have to manage once I got on board the ship. Um, I mentioned it previously yesterday, I was in the line for quite some time. Um, it took like an hour to get everything to be able to get into our cabin, so it ended up making us late for where we needed to be. But I had the uh, 
chance to stand there and ask what people ask about at guest services. And a whole lot of it is to do with the app not working correctly, questions about the app, all of these things. So anything that you can manage before your cruise, ask your travel agent to help you, or uh, you figure it out, call Princess on your own and get that all going because it, it does make a nice difference. Another quick note about the app is the dining. Now the dining, uh, they tell you, um, I have been told uh, by Cus Services on the phone before, just calling Princess, that they don't book, the dining people have told me, Ocean Ready has told me, that they do not book the full capacity of the main dining room or the specialty dining through the app, that they leave some reservations open for people to make when they are on board the ship. But please be aware that when you get on board like this ship, for example, um, you could go to Sabatini's um, on the first day and get your dining reservations ironed out based on availability, based on availability. Along with that, um, some things you just cannot make reservations for uh, until you get on board the ship. The chef's table is one of those things, as is uh, the... Uh, crab Shack, whenever there is a pop-up for that, you have to either call the Dine Line, which on the Discovery Princess is 138, or you just show up and try to um, see if they've got space for you, all right? I recommend doing a reservation if you really wanna do it, okay? And so we'll, we've got that booked and I will let you know about it in our video tomorrow. Finally, here's a really big news break. <laughs> Really big news flash for all of you when it comes to the app and our group. So with our group, what we did is we got a dining time, which I very much appreciated, five o'clock um, in the Juno dining room. We knew what to expect and I let our fa Let's Go family members who are in our group know. Well, um, as we made those reservations, I did ask on the phone if that would mess up anybody's reservations in the app. And I was assured that no, it wouldn't. Um, that was not going to impact any specialty dining reservations or any other main dining re reservations that people had. Well, we've got some people um, in our group who have lost some of their specialty, sorry, some of their main dining room reservations. Funny thing is, it's not all of them for the whole trip. It's a few days worth. And um, so I just wanna give you all a heads up that there are still things going wrong with that. I'm really hopeful that Princess is working on that so that we can um, not have as many glitches. I really appreciate it as I listened at guest services yesterday. A lot of people talked about glitches that guest services did to guests. They said, oh, that's a glitch. And so the reason that I tell you this is I'm really hopeful that Princess is working on it. I'm very optimistic about that. But also don't think that you're the only one with trouble. Um, keep following up and asking for the help that you need to make things work, all right? I hope this helps somebody out there know not to worry. Now this is going to probably make you all smile, but um, a week or so ago, after um, I got back from the Sun Princess and was home for a bit, I said, you know what? I'm not gonna talk about dining on ships anymore. I'm going to only tell you when it is superb, and I'm gonna tell you when it's really not, if something really unexpectedly terrible happens. But I do have a comment. So last night we had dinner in the main dining room, and um, it's beautiful. We have amazing crew members that are taking good care of our group in the main dining room and we really enjoyed our dinner it was great no compl no complaints but I am going to say uh, this was a really interesting thing I ordered the fettuccine alfredo I really like fettuccine alfredo um, I will say that when you look at my photo of the food that I was served as my fettuccine alfredo and you look at the photo of the food that Eric um, are exploring with Eric who posts on our Facebook group uh, what his fettuccine alfredo look like I am sure they also tasted really different so just pointing out uh, that there is a difference you don't always get the same thing even for the same dish. So just be aware of that and go enjoy your dinner. We're looking forward to dinner um, this evening. Uh, this evening is a formal night, so I'll tell you about that in a video tomorrow, okay? And yeah. while we're talking about food, uh, we've seen this on the Island Princess when we were on her last, and so I thought you would kind of like to know what the schedule is here. Um, they give you at embarkation a list here of the different themed evenings in the buffet. So if there is a certain kind of food that you enjoy the 
most or that you know you enjoy, you might want to dine there instead of the main dining room or pop up before or after your main dining room dinner just for a little bit of something if you know you really enjoy it. So in on embarkation day, the um, dinner was Bavarian dinner, tradition, ger traditional German cold cuts, sausages with freshly made spatzel and cabbage. And then this evening, which is um, a formal night, it's a welcome dinner Italian corner, Italian ante pasti and cheeses, mushroom risotto, um, and a selection of pastas and traditional Roman porchetta. And then we've got other nights, and so I'll tell you tomorrow what we're going to be having on Cabo San Lucas night, okay? But it's really fun that they do this, and I like that they let you know in advance what the menus are, like what you can look forward to, so that then you can kind of weigh where you would like to eat dinner uh, as well. You know, you can look at the main dining room um, menu and look at the what they're offering in the buffet, so it just makes it kind of fun. Let's talk about loyalty for just a minute, what we're seeing in the app. A little while ago, I know, I have to eat my words, a while ago I let you know that what the um, loyalty in the app showing up, you don't have to worry about this. You worry about what it shows like when you log in on princess.com and you see what it shows in your captain circle number and then you're going to get the correct medallion when you go on your cruise. So since then a couple of people have told me that they have indeed gotten the wrong color recently. So here's our personal experience with it. Gordon is elite and so he would expect to get the black color on his medallion as we came to pick it. And by the way, it is showing elite in his captain circle uh, number page on princess.com and it is also showing elite when he looks it on the app and when we checked in yesterday, his medallion showed platinum. So, and along with that, this is just kind of fun. Um, and the reason that I'm telling you this is really not to pick on anyone, but just to let everybody know, don't worry if it happens, this is not going to impact your cruise experience. Everything is okay. Um, he got, um, Gordon got a card left on our desk here that says um, welcoming Gordon Larson to come to the new cruiser welcome event. And um, just so you know, they have those on the first sea day at 9.45 in the Vista Lounge. So anyone who is new to Princess, I love that they do this. They welcome everybody aboard. They talk to you about Princess. It's a great event. But when you are elite, it would be kind of funny that you would get one of these. And so I think that clearly they're having a lot of trouble with the loyalty levels um, and how it all manages in their systems. And so make sure that you get the perks that are coming to you based on what level you are. Also. Uh, pay attention to what they've got in the cabin for you when you get on board and if something is missing definitely go ask about it because just because it's not given to you doesn't mean that it's not something that you should be receiving it could easily be something that they just need to add for you so um, kind of be a, be your own um, best advocate and aware of what's going on with that the other thing that I want to let you know here and just so that you know how to manage it on um, the last three princess cruises we have done so we did the island princess on the northern lights in October and then we did the Sun Princess in March, and now here we are on the Discovery Princess. Um, the last two out of three cruises, our medallions have not worked correctly to unlock our stateroom door. Both times, our cabin steward's um, card was not able to work, to get it to work and then start working for us. And yesterday, um, she couldn't get in, <laughs> and she was really nice. They got the deck person, the deck manager, they couldn't get in, and I ended up having to go down to guest services Wait in a very long line because everybody's having trouble with their app and then um they had to actually reset the whole system and do something to my medallion and so just wanted to let you know that's going to be your protocol if your medallion's not working and your cabin steward can't make it start working for you head on down to guest services because they're going to have to actually reset it ever since they reset it it's been working like a dream i will note that while it would not unlock our cabin door correctly it worked just fine for us to get the beverages that we wanted to get when we were out on out on and about on the ship otherwise. So um, I would just say that was the only glitch that we had um, as far as accessing anything with our medallion. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button? We would love to have you with us. I think we need to have you with us. And if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? Believe it or not, it makes a really big difference and we very much appreciate your support.
it's a really special experience to, to have the opportunity to sail on Princess. We love sailing on Princess and we have already, already met some of the most amazing crew members and are having an absolutely glorious time. We've got um, the nice um, crew member that handles the groups, Amanda. Hats off to her. She is a busy, busy lady. She is busy with way more than just us, but she has already smoothed the way for us and made sure that everything is going very nicely for our group. So just wanted to let you all know we're having a wonderful time. We wish you were all here with us, so we look forward to seeing you along the way. We'll put your questions about the Discovery Princess in the comments, and we will be really excited to answer and find out any information that you would like. I will see you all here again tomorrow. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you.